Hello everybody, welcome back to the show. Here's what I've been doing. Smelt the cassiterite sand into tin ingots. Smelt the chalcopyrite ore into copper ingots. Crush the tin ingots into tin dust. Crush the copper ingots into copper dust. Combine the tin dust and the copper dust into bronze dust. Smelt the bronze dust into bronze ingots. Hammer the bronze ingots into bronze plates. Phew! Oh, and also, smelt clay into bricks. And let's not forget, charcoal, 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 charcoal. But now that we have some of the basic stuff out of the way, we can get working on what I really want to do today, which is getting started in the steam age. Now, the first thing is, of course, to create steam. Now, if you don't know how to create steam, what you do is you make a pool of water like this, and then you take a lit torch and you throw it in there until it starts bubbling and producing steam. Yeah, it doesn't actually work that way. So, the first thing we need to do is make a machine that creates steam. And the basic one that's probably the easiest to start off with is the small coil, 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 blow, coil the small coal boiler. And the tooltips are so helpful, it even tells you that this is the early way to get steam power. Well, it's one of the early ways to get steam power, but again, probably the easiest. And as you can see, it's fairly simple. You just need a furnace, some bricks, and some bronze plates. And of course, I realize at this point that I don't actually have a furnace that I want to use. So I'm going to make one real quick. Furnace, 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 like so. And... There we go. One steam coal boiler. And of course, I get an achievement. Yay, so that's going good towards that goal as well. All right, so now that I have the small coal boiler, I'm going to put it down. And for now, I'm just going to put it, I think, here. That's going to be OK. Now, the small coal boiler is pretty simple. We're going to put water into it, which I believe will fill up this a bar on this side and then we give it something to burn we're going to use charcoal for that and that will cause the heat to rise which is this bar here and when the heat gets to a certain enough level it'll boil the water and turn it into steam now an interesting thing about early game Greg tech is as far as I know there is no automatic way for me to put this water into this boiler yeah pretty sure that the only thing I can do is do it by hand. Now fortunately, if you have a bucket of water, I believe you can right click it just like that. And you'll see there's water here. And I was on the wrong chart here. This is water. This is heat. This is steam. But you get the idea. And so we can fill this up with water by just going like this. I'm pretty certain. I think that's five, six, seven, Eight. I don't know how many buckets this can hold. It looks about half, so 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, so about, not about, looks like it holds 16, exactly 16 buckets of water. So now all we have to do is give it something to burn. And let's just go with half a stack of charcoal. And we shall put that over here. And so that will start burning, creating heat. And when it's hot enough, it will create steam. Now, as I said, at this point, I don't believe there's any way for me to automatically move the water into the boiler. There is a pump in Greg Tech. However, there are multiple different kinds of pumps. But these are pumps that kind of go in line with, with pipes, which we'll talk about some other time. And there is... Um, an industrial craft pump, and then there are Greg Tech pumps. And the Greg Tech pumps actually work really well. Uh, however, in both cases of the industrial craft pump and the Greg Tech pump, they require electricity. And we're not in the electrical age yet, so obviously we can't quite do that. Now, another interesting concept is that there's no way to store fluids. So I couldn't, for example, store a lot of water to be placed into the boiler nor could I can I store the steam that the boiler produces 
Now, the only way to store things, again, as far as I know, and somebody can let me know if I'm wrong, but the only way I know of to store things is with the quantum tanks from Greg Tech, but they are not, they also require electricity and power, but they're also much further down the line. They require all kinds of electronic circuits and osmium wires and engraved chips and all this other kind of stuff that uh, obviously we can't do. So there you see, we are now producing steam. The steam will go in this part. Uh, we haven't actually used a lot of water, so this may not be so bad. Now, if it runs out of water, it should be okay. It will just not, obviously, just not produce any more steam. But if you try to add water and the boiler is already heated, I believe that's when it explodes. I believe if it runs out of water, it will not explode. But if you try to add water when it's already hot, it will explode. Uh, and I mean when it's empty and you try to add water. Obviously, if it's half full of water and you add more water, then you're okay. But if it gets empty, don't add more water to it because then you will have a problem. So as you can see, this is filling up with steam, which is good. However, the other thing to note is that the boiler doesn't shut off. Most things in Greg Tech aren't going to just stop working because it's full of steam or, or anything like that. Um, it's much more hands-on than that. So once it becomes full of steam, it will continue to burn coal and boil water and produce more steam. It'll just uh, vent that steam into the air. So in a certain way, you're basically just wasting the charcoal and the water, if you will, to make steam that you're not using. So there's really not a lot you can do about that. Again, if you had a way, if I had a way to store the steam, I could do that. But without that, I can't. So that's where we're at. So I want to basically move on to making the next machinery I want to make, which what I think I'm going to make first, and it's probably not the best of ideas, but I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem, is I want to make the steam macerator. So if we look at that recipe, ah, did you hear that sound? That's the sound of the steam boiling off. Let's see. We'll wait for it to, uh, I'm going to wait for this to come back up again so you can uh, hear and see it boil off again. There you go. So that's when it boils off that steam. Now, the other thing you'll notice is that as this charcoal burns off, you occasionally get these tiny piles of ashes. I am not entirely certain what you can do with them, but looks like they become carbon, which might be able to use be used in various ways. Okay, so let's look at the steam macerator. And as you can see, it's made like this. Pistons, two diamonds, which isn't a problem, I have plenty of diamonds, bronze hulls. The bronze hull is just bronze plates made with a hammer. That's easy enough. And these bronze fluid pipes, which are again bronze plates in this configuration. So fairly simple item to make. And I will do that and be right back. All right, there we go. Steam macerator. Bump. And another achievement. Excellent. Now, just for the sake of letting people know, I guess, Always make sure that you use a wrench to pick up your machinery. Never uh, hit it with a, a pickaxe or anything else because you will destroy it if you do that. Um, I think, yeah, yeah, you just don't want to, if you break it with a pickaxe, I believe it will just destroy it. So you don't want to do that. Always use the wrench. Now, I believe I could put this macerator right next to the coal boiler. Let's try this like so. And it may get steam directly. Let's find out. The macerator, if you don't know, will double. Um, basically, it will double ores from different ores. So it's like this charcoal pyrite ore I can smelt into a copper ingot. But if I put it into a macerator, I get two crushed 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 ugh. I get two crushed charcoal pyrite ore and each one of those can be hammered into an impure pile of charcoal pyrite dust and each one of those can then be smelted into copper ingots so it's an early way of doubling my ore output from what I find so let's go and put let's go check this first ah see there's no steam in here 
so it must be putting the steam into the steam macerator. Sadly, there's no real indication of how much steam is in the steam macerator. And that's kind of a bummer. The other thing to note is that there is this sort of square hole in the back of the machinery, and that is a vent. And you have to have that unblocked by the machinery, so there can't be anything here but air. If, you, know, you can't put a block here, and that's how it vents excess uh, heat or steam or something like that. So if we take this charcoal pyrite ore and put it here, it runs very loudly. <laughs> Most of the machinery in Greg Tech tends to be very loud. Uh, hopefully it won't be as loud when I edit the video for you guys, but in my ear right now, it is extremely, extremely loud. And is it still running? I believe that it is. Yes, it is still running. So it will go through and crush that, as I said, into the two crushed chalco pyrite ores. Just going to go ahead and wait for it to finish real quick. It's not a very quick process, obviously. Again, patience is a key thing. And you heard that little vent sound, and that is, again, what is necessary for that. So there you go, ch crushed charcoal pyrite ore. Now, why it saddens me a little bit that this doesn't, or this machine, the macerator doesn't show me how much steam is in it, is because if it does not have enough steam in it, to complete the process, then um, that piece of ore will not get turned into two crushed ores and all of the steam that went into it up to that point will be wasted. But there's not really much that we can do about that, so we're going to leave it the way it is for now. This is all temporary. Obviously, the steam age is a way to get started, but what we're going to really want to do is move into the electrical age where everything is much better. So question of course is then what machine would I make next and what I'm actually going to do is go look at the achievements for Greg Tech and let's see here okay so here was create a bron crafty bronze boiler which we did and then the mass rater I did that and you can see here that it's almost as though the recommendation is to make an alloy smelter so let's go ahead and do that we'll make the alloy smelter all right and so there's the steam alloy smelter and so a bricked bronze hull so remember before we made a bronzed hull and it was just bronze this is bronze and bricks two furnaces and some more of those small bronze fluid pipes not too bad let me craft that up I'll be right back all right steam alloy smelter let's take that and get our achievement pretty cool and now one thing i'm unsure of is whether or not i can put these you know like if i can put this here again you'll see the vent that's needed out the back side of it and i don't know if this would receive steam in the ideal world the steam would travel all the way down it may not be the case here the alloy smelter allows you to do many different things, but primarily what you end up doing with it is combining metals and making something else. So you can see here that four lead and one antimony will equal five battery alloy. Where we can use this to our benefit is to make bronze. So now, instead of having to have bronze dust, I can actually, or I'm sorry, tin dust and copper dust, I can actually use tin ingots and copper ingots if I have them. So let me actually cook up some copper ingots. Oh, oh, that's bronze. Do I have any copper ingots that I have laying around? As you can see, I made quite a bit of bronze. Da, 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 da. Let me go ahead and cook up some, uh, some of this copper and I'll be right back. Also, I've noticed that this boiler has filled up with steam again, so presumably that would mean that this steam macerator is uh, also full of, of steam and not requiring any more. So if I were to put, say, a charcoal pyrite ore in there, we should be able to see that this kind of drops down. It dropped down just a little bit, 
at one point there. So that's actually pretty nice. All right, so back here at the alloy smelter, I'm gonna try and put in one tin and three copper, and it does not have any steam. So I don't have the trickle down effect that I was hoping for. Not a big deal. We're going to go ahead and pick up the alloy smelter like this, and we'll put the alloy smelter on this side. We should see this go away because all of that steam went into this alloy smelter. But before I actually try to use it, I'm gonna wait for the boiler to get steam in it again so that I can be certain that the alloy smelter has enough steam to process what I want it to do. Okay, so while I'm waiting for that steam thing to fill back up, I'm gonna grab me six silver ingots, use my hammer as usual to turn those into three silver plates because what I wanna make now is the simple solar boiler. And so if we look at that, we can see it takes silver plates, some glass, another bricked bronze hull, and some more fluid pipes. I'm gonna make that, I'll be right back. All right, simple solar boiler. Take that, we get another achievement, awesome. And as might be expected, the solar boiler works via solar power. So it needs to be able to see the sun. So let me put it down so I can show that's what it looks like. It's kind of, well, it's very unimpressive. Let's just face facts. But this uh, on top here is supposed to represent the solar boiler. And so there has to be sun that the solar boiler can see. So obviously it's not going to be able to see the sun if I've got dirt over it like I do now. I want to be able to put it somewhere where it can see sunlight. What I'm going to do for now, I think, is I'm going to try to do something like, no, I don't want to do that. I think what I will do is I will put it in the ceiling. So what I want to do is kind of go above this like that and put it here like so. So the simple boiler, the simple solar boiler will be there. Now, of course, it's daytime, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, it, it also, well, let me go ahead and do this. It requires water just like the coal boiler. So let's go ahead and one, put in some water. Two, 14, 15, and 16. As you can see, it also holds 16 buckets of water. This thing is now full, which is good. So simple solar boiler is at uh, 16 buckets of water. Let's go ahead and sleep. And now that it's daytime, this solar boiler should start to heat up. So as you might expect, the solar boiler will only work during the day. At nighttime, it will stop working. Um, I believe it's designed in a way that it will get up to its, it will get up to enough heat to create steam during the day for a little bit, and then it will cool off again at night and then have to build back up the next day. If you sleep away most of the nights, you will of course have more daytime and the simple solar boiler will be much more effective for you. So it's gonna kinda depend on how you wanna do things. The simple solar boiler obviously doesn't have to use any coal or charcoal, which is nice on many levels, but you have to make sure it's daytime a lot or else you will lose the effectiveness out of it. Other than that, it operates pretty much the same as the coal boiler. All right, so, Back over here to the alloy smelter again, I'm gonna put in one tin ingot and three copper ingots. And once again, very loud machinery. But as you can see, the alloy smelter is doing what it needs to do. And when it gets done, we will have bronze, but better bronze, well, not better bronze, but more output on the bronze. Because as you can see, we got four bronze ingots. So remember when we combined dusts, the tin dust and the copper dust, one tin dust, three copper dust, only made three bronze ingots. With the alloy smelter, one tin ingot and three copper ingots will give us four bronze ingots. So we get more bronze. As you can see, it actually did use quite a bit of steam to do that as well. We're down to about half of where we were at. 
but that is to be expected because that is kind of how it works. Let's check on our solar bowl. You can see it is heating up. Now, with this uh, solar boiler, we have an issue of, well, how are we going to utilize that steam? Now, we could do something similar as we've done here with a coal boiler and um, put the machinery right next to it. But in this case, I don't think I'm going to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is make some more of those fluid pipes that I made earlier. So, hammer, wrench, and then bronze plates. And I get six of these small bronze fluid pipes. Now, you'll see on the tooltip there, two information is very important. Fluid capacity, 800 liters per second. Heat limit, 2000 Kelvin. So, we can move 800 liters per second of fluid through the pipe but each pipe section sort of operates as a tank as well in that that fluid capacity is also how much can be stored or how much can be in that pipe at one point in time so a section of pipe can have 800 liters in it and if you don't know the conversion 1000 liters is a bucket so it's it's almost a bucket the heat limit is also important um if you have something hot like steam, you're going to want to make sure you have a good heat limit. If you have something cold like just water, don't need as much heat limit. If you have something really hot like lava, you might need a higher heat limit, etc. So you want to make sure you're using the pipes that are going to be appropriate. Now, the next piece of machinery I want to make is the steam extractor. And it's made like this, bronze hull, piston, glass, bronze fl fluid pipes, and... There we go, steam extractor and another achievement. Very cool. Let's go check. It's about two in the afternoon and uh, Minecraft time, two in the afternoon. The simple solar boiler has been on all day and you can see it still has not produced any steam. So whereas we had uh, much um, faster returns off of our coal boiler. So you'll have to factor that into your decision as well as whether you would you'd rather use coal uh the coal or the solar and now my solar boiler is starting to produce some steam now an interesting element on this is uh, again as i said i could maybe take this extractor and put it right next to the solar boiler or i can pipe out i can uh, use these pipes to get steam out of it now if you want to do that you will have to pipe the steam out from the sides of the boiler so if I put that like that you'll see it connect and I don't know it may not do anything if it doesn't have anywhere to actually put the um, the steam so we're gonna come down one and then go like this and is that enough does this now have it in there well the steam extractor in the beginning of things is used to get rubber out of sticky resin so let's put this in here and see if it works it does not so it's not doesn't have any steam yet in it uh, oh that's the actually the back of it that's a problem so you can use the wrench to turn machinery when you're holding the wrench and you look at a piece of machinery you will see big thing in the front and then the sides here and then the corners the corners refer to the back so refer to the opposite side and then the sides refer to that side so that side that side the top side or the bottom side so if I want the front to be over here I can right click on the big space in here and or right click there and I get the back I should say if I shift right click or if I right click on the corner here that back part will go to there so you can you know, you can, that side, and then it goes there, that side, oops. Well, it won't turn that way for some reason. But anyway, you can play around with it. You can rotate things fairly easily. So that's the vent for the extractor. Let's see if it will work now. Nope. Ah, okay, here's my problem right there. That is the output for steam if I want to do things this way. So now I can take my wrench. And I can rotate that, I think like that, so it's on this side. Yep, see now it's that side. 
So now it should be going into the steam extractor. So you can see it going down. Steam is going down. All right. And now if I put sticky resin in there, there you go. See, now it's processing. It is also very loud in my ear. And it's a slightly slow process as well. Now, I'm going to put this dirt back here. Oops. Here. And one thing you'll notice is that... Uh, there's a hole. I mean, there's what looks like a hole here. Now, Greg Tech does have something called covers. And I shouldn't do this because it's almost nighttime. Greg Tech does have something called covers, which you'll be able to make later. And we can use that to sort of cover up this hole, if you will. But the other important thing to note is that these Greg Tech block, these Greg Tech pipes are considered to be full blocks. So they cover that full block. Um, you can't come, you know, you, things aren't going to fall down in between them and stuff like that. Even though it looks like it's not, it does cover the full block. The other thing to note, which you would have seen as I just did it, is that these pipes are considered to be carrying hot fluid, in this case, hot steam. So if you touch them, you will take damage. As I say, if I go next to them here, I'm taking damage because they are hot. They have hot steam in them. Okay, so you can see there my... Uh, the steam extractor turned that sticky resin into raw rubber dust. And the steam extractor has uh, several uh, other recipes that you can do with it, but primarily what it's used for, I think anyway, is to get the raw rubber dust out of the sticky resin. It looks like you can use it to get various types of dyes as well, if that's what you're into. But with the raw rubber dust, you, we can end up combining that in the alloy smelter with some sulfur dust to make the rubber bars. And then the rubber bars can be used to make various different types of tools. Okay, so now that it's nighttime, the heat is dropping on our solar boiler and we're not producing any steam anymore because the heat has dropped below that certain point. So again, you, you know, you're going to want to balance your own playthrough as far as is it better to use coal is it better to use solar personally I think I'm primarily going to use the coal boilers because with the ability with the way that charcoal is made I make so much of it at one point in time look at all that charcoal I have so much of it that I feel like that's a fairly easy way to do things but you know there you go you have a way to make steam with coal we have a way to make steam with solar and I hear an Enderman. Is he in my base? No, it must be outside. Um, again, things are a little bit complicated. We have to manually put water into the boilers because there's no way to automatically do it. I can't store, I can't produce like a lot of steam and then store that steam and use it in my steam machinery because I don't have a way to store steam. But the steam age is not supposed to be easy, right? It's supposed to be uh, kind of a problem and a hassle so you'll want to move on to the electrical age and do things, you know, more efficiently, right? I think anyway, it seems like that's what it'd be to me. But there you go. We've also made the macerator. So that will help me do some easy doubling of my ores, which will make things nice. The alloy smelter, I'll get better um, return out of the, the, the copper and tin into bronze. That's, of course, really nice. And, of course, there are other alloys that we can be able to make in there, which are good as well. And we've got our extractor, meaning that we can start working on converting our uh, sticky resin from the rubber trees into actual rubber that we can use for various things as well. And if we take a look at our achievements over here in Greg Tech, you'll see uh, we've done this, all of these kinds of things. We've made the, uh, the, the solar boiler there and we've gone through to making the extractor. And the next thing is to be able to make the electronic parts, the NAND chips which goes on towards getting us into the electrical age. So that is going to do it for this episode. If you have any questions or if you have any comments, please leave them for me in the comment section down below. Also feel free to drop me a note and say hi. If you have any critiques or criticisms, leave those for me as well. As always, I thank you so very much for joining me and I will see you next time.